Hi, I'm Mattia from Zebra BI and today I'd like to take you with me on a journey of how you as a financial analyst or a controller can understand and better analyze your P&L statements with the help of Zebra BI. Follow me into Power BI and I'll show you. So with Zebra BI you will be able to explore a P&L statement in Power BI like never before. You'll be able to visualize the sizes and directions of different accounts and this will give you the ability to better explain the financial flow. You will also be able to dig deeper into your data with easy additional calculations to be able to better understand the data that you're analyzing. Also, you will have visual and color-coded variances toward budget or any other plans that you wish that will help you explain the complex financial data to a wider audience. And of course, we can't forget comments. The comments that will ensure that all of your readers are never really confused about what led to a certain data point, but know exactly what's going on. By the way, we've already delved quite deep into the PL statement in a webinar that we did about the visualization and how you should prepare your data in Power BI for that to be the most effective. If you haven't checked it out yet, I would advise that you maybe start there and after you watch that video, come back to this one, as that one has all of the basics that you need uh, to start at the starting point while well, I will start today. But still, before we dive in into the analysis, let's just recap a couple of points. So, a crucial part of the foundation is understanding how the model should be built. So we opt for a star schema where we have one fact table containing our financials and many different dimension tables connected to our fact table with IDs. Of these, the accounts table is I guess the most significant for us as it structures our accounts to ensure the right order when visualizing our financials. The second part involves understanding why you as a controller or a financial analyst should even include visualizations in your PL analysis. So visualizing a PL statement is actually pivotal in enhancing the audience's understanding of the financial flow that it aims to convey. In simpler terms, we visualize this data to make it more comprehensible to non-finance individuals and of course help us as analysts spot all the biggest dips and raises in the data. And the easiest way to achieve a visual representation of PNL is with a structured or vertical visualization made by Zebra BI tables. So admittedly, this part that we're going into now is not new, but visualizing your PNL statement is so effective that it actually warrants a second mention. By first inserting our accounts and actual measures into our visualization, uh, we start the visualization process. And of course, just like we mentioned before, we started with a vertical waterfall chart. And despite a vertical waterfall chart is a pretty sophisticated visualization, it's very easy to create and even customize with Zebra BI. With just a simple inversion and the resulting of different rows, we can obtain this beautiful representation of what positively and negatively contributes to our bottom line. But that's not all. As financial analysts or controllers, the most crucial part of the job is always answering where were we doing worse or hopefully better than we planned, right? So this of course means variances and usually in Power BI this would require a lot of additional DAX measures and calculations with the addition of custom formats on your calculated measures and hopes that you can show something similar to what you were able to produce in Excel with formulas and some conditional formatting. But with Zebra BI it's just a matter of a drag and drop. So no DAX, no calculations, just quick and relative answers when needed with a visual representation of the most important parts for your financial flow. Um, this feature, of course, comes out of the box and, uh, well, it's now very easy to understand that the green color means that we're doing better and the red means that we're doing worse. And this is also being emphasized by the direction of the bars and the pins uh, or, or the pins if we're looking at the relative variances and uh, of course the plus and minus signs on all of the data labels. 
All right, now let's explore further. So to gain a better understanding of how we're actually doing, some additional calculations may help us. The first one I see now will actually be an adjusted operating income because of a one-time expense that happened in March and was, as I see, not added to the data model. So I can actually do this pretty simply by adding a new calculated item with add formula. And I'm going to name it one time operational expense. And I will give it a value of 180,000. All right, I will also not skip this count and I will invert it so it it will negatively impact um, our calculation of uh, the adjusted operating income that I will add right now in pretty much the same way. So just right click add formula and we're gonna call it adjusted operating income. Okay. And now we choose the right accounts for the calculation, which means that we need our operating income. There we go. And our one-time expense. All right. Simply add this. And that's it. And as you saw, I didn't need any docs. There was no going into the model. It was just a, just a formula. It's pretty much as simple as it can get. All right. Cool, now that we have this, let's move forward. So, to gain a better understanding, we usually like to calculate or show our results as part of our revenues. Think of, let's say, gross profit margin to understand the percentage of revenue that exceeds the costs of goods sold, uh, indicating the efficiency of production and our pricing strategies. Then maybe we follow this up with operating profit margin to understand our operational efficiency and also our expense ratios um, to really understand the proportion of revenues that are consumed by operating expenses such as salaries, rent, utilities, marketing, right? And in the end, our return on sales to really gain some insight into our overall profitability. All right. And while we were talking, all of the ratios I've mentioned have already been calculated and added directly to our visualization without the need of any formulas. Even for the adjusted operating income that we've calculated a little bit before. So what you've seen in action is a new feature called quick column calculations. And while uh, visual calculations aren't anything new in Zebra BI, they have recently been introduced into native visuals. However, I have to mention that what sets Zebra BI apart from the native visuals is the commitment to simplicity and ease of use. With Zebra BI, as you saw, you won't find yourself digging into complex docs or different formulas. Instead, the platform offers minimal and easy to understand formulas that anyone can use and you know they're available to designers of the reports and also to the viewers right so this will really come in handy when you get a question about any of these ratios during your next board meeting being able to produce them on the spot and with such ease so we're really taking simplicity to a whole new level with our quick column calculations as this feature already offers you just different column calculation options such as percent of grand total and percent of running grand total or just like we did in the calculation of our ratios which is the percent of custom that actually allows us to simply choose any account or account group in the calculation. So let me just quickly add the calculation again now that you're paying attention to it so you guys can follow along. Um, so we want to calculate the percentage of each account relative to the total revenues. So we have to go here on this plus sign above our categories and select the percent of dot 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 option. And now uh, we have to choose revenues. There we go as our base. All right, perfect. And just like that, Zebra BI calculated the percentage for each category relative to total revenues. 
This is now giving us valuable insight in a single action for many of our different KPIs. So the important thing here is that we didn't have to go into our data model, we didn't have to add any new measures, or we didn't even have to export our data into Excel and do the calculations there. So everything was done in Power BI as easy as possible. And also don't forget that we can also visualize these calculations and gain actually all of the benefits of the calculations and then the visualizations as well, right? So we can easily understand the relationships between different accounts and our revenues a lot better. All right, so now that we understand what's going on, it's time to give all of this knowledge to our readers as well. And the best way that we can do this is of course, including comments that will explain the why behind the numbers. This will leave us more time and of course, give us better information to focus on the problematic areas. So the important thing for any comment is that it has to be linked to the data point that it's trying to explain. So at this time, it would be important to mention that in the case that we have here, we have a hierarchical PNL. We would also need our comments to be hierarchical as it is perfectly logical that we would sometimes like to explain in more detail an account on the lowest level and sometimes we'd like to explain something that happened in the whole account group. So now, why do we even need hierarchical statements, right? Well, maybe not for government reporting, but for internal reporting and general finance and board meetings, right? This can be a godsend as we can actually control the amount of data that we are presenting at any given time. This means that your CEO will probably be more interested in the bigger picture and the other financial analysts and controllers will actually want to dig in deeper and get to the roots of all the effects. This means that we have to bring these two things now together to work in unison. So adding hierarchical comments is actually pretty easy. We will now add a new data source to our model an Excel table that will hold all of our hierarchical comments. So this is just one way to get your comments into Power BI, but of course you can use any provider that you already use for data to also input the comments table into your data model. Um, one important thing is we have to structure the comments file so that it includes IDs of all the levels of the hierarchy where we want to have the comments presented. A link to the calendar table will also help as a PL statement usually shows the bottom line for a specific time period and of course uh, what the comments actually should say, right? Now, uh, now that we have this and I've shown you this, now we have to add the table and connect the dimensions we need. To do this, we will simply navigate into our model view, click here on Excel workbook, choose our hierarchical comments folder uh, file, click open, uh, add our table one. We can, we can check that it's the same data and just simply click on load. All right, that's it. Now we get the table here and we can connect our account IDs are already connected and we also have to connect the date ID to our, uh, to our calendar table. Perfect. So now that we have our table in the model, we will also need a measure that will check on what level a comment is supposed to be displayed and convey this information to our visual. So the measure is pretty simple. Uh, but it is actually the first DAX measure that we're actually going to create today. Um, and what it will do, it will actually go uh, through every level of the hierarchy where the comment is supposed to be placed, starting from the bottom and then moving towards the top. And um, just so you guys don't worry, I'm not expecting you guys to know this DAX from heart. And um, if you're only starting in Power BI, the DAX code will also be linked in the description of the video, so you guys can simply just copy and paste it to your own model. Um, 
We will also include the comments file so you can see exactly how the comments have to be structured. Um, so everything should work out of the box for you if you go um, with the steps that I've shown you today. So once you have all of this set up, it will just simply drag and drop the new comment measure into the placeholder on the Zebra BI visualization. Good. And what we can see now that when we added the comment measure, you'll notice that some of the comments are not actually displayed because they're in collapsed parts of the hierarchy. So these are marked with just small little comment marker dots, as you can see here, and this indicates to us that the comment is hidden inside of the hierarchy and prompts us to, uh, to extend it for further insights. This then brings us again to the importance of the dynamic granularity that can be achieved with hierarchical financial statements. So show only the data that is important to your reader at any time. All right, that's it. Now we have a PL statement that is data dense, informative, but most of all, really understandable to the widest audience possible. Bringing this PL to your next board meeting will definitely ensure that you spend the meeting searching for solutions and not explaining the data that you have on your visualization. So if you're looking for a way to streamline your financial reporting and gain more insights from your PNL statements, why not try Zebra BI? Just go and click the link in the description below to start your free trial. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Also, share it to all of your colleagues, especially if they're controllers or financial analysts, even CEOs, to see what they're missing. Together, let's empower more finance professionals to excel at their roles and drive business success. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.